Welcome to the 2021-2022 February DAC training recordings. This recording is a part of our uh, trainings on the Kentucky Summative Assessments. My name is Joy Barr and I will be completing this training with you today. Let's continue. Kentucky students will take the Kentucky Summative Assessments to meet federal and state testing requirements. Previously, these tests were called the K-PREP. You may remember that from previous years. Uh, moving forward, we're going to be calling them the Kentucky Summative Assessments. They were developed by our own Kentucky teachers and align with the Kentucky academic standards in each content area. Who does and who doesn't take the Kentucky Summative Assessment or KSA? You see the two columns here on this particular slide. Let's look first at those students who are required to test. Basically all students in grades three through eight, 10 and 11, including those with disabilities, will take the KSA this spring. Are foreign exchange students take the KSA? Students who are retained or also those students who are taking a supplemental year. We're going to talk a little bit about that supplemental year on the next slide, but let's finish with this particular slide prior to that. Students who skip a grade will test at the new test grade level. Students also are required to test who move within the state during testing. Students with a minor medical emergency and can receive a, an accom accommodation, appropriate accommodation, uh, are expected to test. Our first year EL or English language students are required to attempt mathematics and science. That's four multiple choice or one extended response. Second year EL students and later uh, participate in all content areas. There are a few students who are not required to uh, participate in the Kentucky uh, Summative Assessment. One of those is uh, a, the student who might be enrolled in the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Program. It also has a new name. It is called the Kentucky Alternate Summative Assessment. So those students in, in alternate do not participate in the KSA. Students enrolled at Job Corps centers, students with approved medical non-participation requests, and students expelled without services. So as I mentioned uh, on the previous slide, uh, new this year is the Supplemental School Year Program. Uh, last year in Senate Bill 128, because of the pandemic and there were uh, many schools uh, that were experiencing virtual learning, they implemented this program. So it allows for students to retake 2020-2021 courses or grades during the 2021-22 school year or last year to this year. So students can take advantage of this supplemental year. They can take assessments that are required in their enrolled grade level at the time of testing. And we have an example there. For example, if you took uh, your supplemental year uh, in grade 10, you would take the grade 10 KSA in reading and mathematics again. Again, that is Senate Bill 128. We will be developing some processes for you to uh, note those students who are participating in that supplemental year program. Also students uh, this year uh, who are, whether or not the student is virtual 
or in person will be uh, expected to test in person and uh, and all of our testing environments that where testing occurs in, in our schools or wherever the environment in which they test, uh, they are expected to follow uh, local uh, school protocols pertaining to, to our pandemic, uh, be that social distancing, the wearing of masks, uh, uh, classroom size, all of those things, but follow the local district safety protocols for further testing. For 2022, our, our testing will be uh, online this year. Uh, the grades in which uh, that will be assessed are reading, mathematics, science, social studies, editing and mechanics, and on-demand writing. And you see the grades in which uh, the test will be administered there on your screen. Uh, at the bottom, you will see the quality of school climate and safety survey. This survey is to be given to all students uh, prior to the first content area, and we'll talk a little bit more about that survey a little bit later on. But these are the, uh, the, the tests that will be occurring and at what grade level that they will be administered at. There are many resources available to schools and districts to use to prepare for and to use during the administration of the KSA. This is just a short list there that is available to you. You will see that um, most of the items here are links so that you can easily access those materials. We do have one item on here that I know is uh, something that is uh, of interest to, to many of you who uh, uh, administer and schedule our tests, the items and times chart that is close to being approved and uh, we hope that it will be available to you by the time that you uh, participate in the uh, question and answer sessions later this, uh, this uh, in, within the next month. The Kentucky Pearson Portal is a, a resource that uh, was developed last year by Kentucky as well as Pearson. It is a resource that contains all of the items that are listed on this particular page. It is a, a good place for you to go and look for manuals, practice tests, tutorials, uh, scripts, anything that you might need to help you with administering the KSA, as well as the KDE website. Many of uh, these items will also be available to you on the website. So those are the two big main uh, resource locales the Kentucky Pearson Portal and the KDE website. Again, you will find uh, test administration manuals available for the KSA. This uh, manual was uh, changed last year as well. Prior to uh, last year, it was referred to as a DAC back manual. Uh, we have uh, changed that to have one resource for for everyone to use one particular manual. Uh, practice tests and tutorials are available to you on that on that Kentucky Pearson portal, and I would encourage the use of those now so that students can be uh, become prepared for for the test. Uh, to be familiar with online testing as well as the use of TestNav. Scripts are also available to our, our schools uh, and those will be grade level. Uh, those are the actual script for the test administrator to use uh, when administering the test, uh, both online and there will also be a section in the script for the administration of the paper-based test. Now, as the test administration manual and scripts are finalized and made available, they again will be available to you in the Kentucky Pearson portal. 
Let's now look a little bit at scheduling. As mentioned, the items and times chart, uh, which again is a popular item uh, for our schools and districts, is a very helpful resource that is close to being developed. Uh, it is uh, to be used um, by our, our schools and districts in developing the testing sessions, the times in which that they need to allow for, for a testing schedule. On this chart, it is developed by grade level. Uh, on the, on this, this is a little snippet of what that chart will look like, and you will be able to see all grade levels. You will be able to see the content area that is assessed at each grade level, and the recommended time for each of the testing sessions by content areas. So that time is to be used in developing your testing schedule. And as you will see in uh, later on in the PowerPoint, there will be uh, uh, opportunities for the student to have additional time if needed. Um, but we want wanted to give you an approximation of time that we think is reasonable for a student to complete um, a content area test. And then you at the school level will develop your test schedule and add in additional time for, for students who work past that allotted time or allowed time, as well as students who might have extended time. On this chart, you will see the, uh, again, that the content area. You will see how many forms of the assessment uh, are available by content area. Uh, this year, we are having multiple forms of the test, and you will see those there, listed there. Uh, you will see the parts of each of the content areas. Each of the tests will have one part with the exception of mathematics, where there is two. Um, in mathematics, we have a calculator part and a non-calculator part of the test. You will also see the number of questions that will be available on each of the forms. So for example, on this chart here that you see reading grade three, that there will be 30 questions. So the, there will be 30 questions on each of those six forms. Now, once you look over to the right at item types, you will see multiple choice, multiple select, technology enhanced, and short answer. So those particular uh, item types, that may vary by form. And you, so you may ask, well, how many multiple choice items will I see on, on the test? Then you would then look, looking at this chart, you would go to the very bottom of that page, that chart, and you will see some tabs going across the bottom. We are looking now at the overall tab that will show all grade levels and all content areas but then you can select the grade level and would be able to see how many uh, items, item types that you have per form uh, that would total up to the total number of questions. So I think that you will like this new uh, layout uh, for the chart, uh, types and times chart, and that it will be uh, a, a good resource for you to develop your testing schedules. So to continue on with scheduling, our test and makeup sessions may be completed within the last 14 days of instruction. That is 14 days at the end of your school or district calendar. And we ask that all tests uh, are completed within that 14 days. So you have 14 uh, full days to do all of your testing 
and all of your makeup sessions. We're wanting to develop as much flexibility with our schools and districts as possible. And should you need any additional flexibility to please contact uh, our office. Initial in-person testing should be completed in content order. Reading, mathematics, science, social study, studies, editing and mechanics, and on-demand writing. Of course, you know that uh, reading and mathematics are uh, our assessments, our content areas that are federally required, and so they are completed at each of our testing uh, grades, um, with the exception of high school, but it uh, reading and math is also given at grade 10. Uh, the other content areas are administered at grade bands, so elementary, middle, or high. The initial test session may only contain one content area. We also ask that uh, schools follow the administration code or inclusion of special population guidelines for test security. Uh, just a reminder that anyone that uh, administers the KSA needs to have received the administration code training as well as the inclusion of special populations training if providing accommodations. Follow also any local policies pertaining to our, our pandemics, uh, electronics, all of those kinds of guidance documents, as well as the test administration manual. You will want to allow for breaks when developing your testing schedule, especially if you are having multiple sessions in a day. If you are having multiple sessions, you do want to have a break between sessions. You uh, at the school determine the length of those breaks. They may be short, such as a stand and stretch, go to the restroom break, or they can be much longer where you uh, may be having lunch or doing some other type of activity. Makeup sessions need to be completed during that 14 day testing window. Again, you want to do all of your test sessions as well as your makeup sessions during that window. The content tests may be combined during the online makeup sessions. So you may be giving a makeup session to a student who is taking reading and one who maybe is taking science. Uh, that uh, is is uh, how is available to you as you are developing your uh, makeup testing schedule. You want to schedule those uh, makeup sessions as soon as is reasonably possible. So as you as soon as you see that a student has missed a test session, then you want to try to get them scheduled as soon as they are back in school. Seating charts are also required for our makeup sessions. Estimated testing times are available for each of the content tests, as you saw on the number of items and testing times chart. Again, this estimated time is for you to develop your testing schedule. Students who show continued progress are allowed to work on the KSA past that estimated or recommended time. If a student has been working diligently on the test and as the test administrator can see through active monitoring, then they are able to go on and continue with the test until such time as they have completed the content test. You will want to record this uh, occurrence at the school of how much time that the school that the student actually did use. And you want to make sure that you develop your testing schedule in a manner that allows those students who finish the test uh, uh, on time or or sooner can return back to their normal instruction activities. 
So students who have uh, individual education plans or IEPs, 504 plans or program services plans that indicate the need for uh, uh, extended time that also needs to be built into the testing schedule to allow for for those students to have that extended time. And as with the uh, uh, extra time that uh, was to be scheduled. You need to make uh, arrangements for the, the remaining students to go back to instructional activities while students uh, are uh, completing their extended time on the KSA. After hours testing. For districts that may have uh, some alternative programs, or who offer uh, virtual students uh, opportunities to come in and test uh, after regular school hours, be it in the evening, possibly even on Saturday mornings. Uh, we want to uh, give schools the opportunity to, to have sessions uh, during those after school hours. Just contact us uh, and uh, share that information with us and uh, if approved, then we will contact Pearson so that uh, they will be able to extend the testing hours on, on their in their system. And they will ask for uh, some basic information from, from the district and school uh, as to the grade and the session name and the content being tested. Non-participation and emergency forms are uh, to be provided uh, to students as uh, as needed. Should uh, a request for a medical non-participation occur, that request is made in our SDRR application or student data review and rosters application. So the request for a student who might need a medical non-participation is completed in SDRR. There are paper forms for each of those uh, that you see on the screen there, non-participation and emergency. Those can be completed and kept at the school or district. That is your documentation uh, showing uh, what was done uh, and any background in, uh, information that needs to be uh, kept with both of those uh, items, medical non-participation as well as emergency. Uh, this year, a uh, non-participation request can be made for an individual content test or the entire test, whatever is uh, the student need. So again, a non-participation request can be made in SDRR, again, by content area, or the entire test. All of that paper uh, or electronic documentation uh, on those forms needs to be kept at the district. Another mention of the quality of school climate and safety survey. This survey uh, includes items on the school climate school safety, as well as opportunities to learn. Uh, these questions uh, uh, are have been developed into a survey that should be given to uh, every tested grade, should be given at every tested grade prior to that first content test. In most instances, that is reading. The uh, exception to that is grade 11, where science is the first content that is uh, administered. The time for the quality of school climate and safety survey is approximately 20 minutes. This is a separate testing session. There is no seal code for the survey but it is a separate test session that again needs to be administered prior to that first content uh, test. There's no separate roster for this. Uh, it is a part of our KSA and alternate KSA rosters. 
Uh, schools may want to consider uh, giving the survey uh, uh, individually. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, give the survey as a separate session for, for our, especially our younger students, uh, grades three, maybe grade four, uh, have them take the survey one day and then maybe start the content test uh, on the following day. That is uh, just uh, dependent upon your school schedule and what you feel like would be in the best interest of the student. This chart, though small, uh, is uh, a listing of the important dates that will be very helpful to you uh, in setting up your test administration this year. This is developed by Pearson and it is a list of, again of important dates that will you, you will use during the test administration. This will be developed into a handout and available to you in your materials for the uh, spring, uh, spring testing for our February DAC trainings. Uh, again, this is broken down by uh, what the user needs to do uh, to complete testing and uh, the date in which that they need to complete that. A you know, again, a couple of the things that you may find of interest on this uh, slide is when you can de begin developing testing sessions, uh, when uh, manuals are to be expected uh, to arrive, uh, all of those sorts of things are on this important dates chart. Pearson Access Next. This is Pearson's uh, online uh, system that uh, where that schools will develop their test sessions. Our student data is loaded into Pearson Access Next for the KSA. Uh, later in the year, uh, schools will be, be able to ex access uh, reports, uh, student results, and all of those th sorts of things in Pearson Access Next or PAN. Uh, more information will be available uh, in our recordings and in our trainings this year um, uh, on Pearson Access Next as well as TestNav that uh, they will be provided by Pearson. KDE will be providing the, a student data file uh, to Pearson to load into Pearson Access Next uh, prior to March the 7th, which is the date in which that schools and districts uh, are anticipated that they can begin uh, test session uh, creation at that time. But this student data is extracted from Infinite Campus and sent uh, to Pearson to load into PAN. And this is used to uh, determine the enrollment in grades and then you will then go from there to developing uh, test sessions. There are many resources again available to you to use uh, with our Pearson systems. Uh, Pearson Access Next has several uh, resources available to you. You see the link to Pearson Access Next on the bottom of this screen as well as a list of uh, various uh, documents and tutorials and practice tests. And again, all of these are available on that Pearson Access Next uh, on their homepage there, as well as the Kentucky Pearson portal where that you can be seeing all of these types of, of resources and can be learning about uh, both the Pearson Access Next as well as TestNav. Preparing test sessions. The number of test sessions and how many that you want uh, to have during a particular day uh, is a local decision. Uh, working closely with the uh, administration at the school, as well as working with your technology staff there at the school and district. Uh, students will be preloaded into Pearson Access Next, and then the DAC or BAC 
can create those test sessions. Students are placed in those individual test sessions and then they will take the operational test itself into te in test nav, which is Pearson's online testing platform. Again, the creation of test sessions can begin March the 7th in Pearson Access Next. Student test sessions. Students should complete the test in a single continuous test session per content area. That means that if you uh, take the reading test, you want to complete the entire uh, reading test in one continuous testing session. There may be some exceptions for that uh, for our students that uh, receive accommodations. Only uh, mathematics that has a part A and a part B could possibly be tested over multiple days. Multiple test sessions may be scheduled each day for each content area. Content area assessments uh, may be administered throughout the day. For example, depending upon the school and their testing schedule, reading could be given as often as in the first, the second, the third, and fourth classroom periods. Just a friendly reminder that uh, any uh, materials, any instructional content uh, needs to be removed or covered during testing. And this is per the administration code. We do not want any classroom materials to provide a testing advantage to any student. Again, testing is given in order. Reading, math, science, social studies, editing and mechanics, on-demand writing. For schools with a one-to-one -one student computer ratio, you want to make sure that you work closely with your technology staff there to determine how many students can test simultaneously. Makeup sessions are also to be administered during that 14 day window as well. And again, flexibility is offered for those makeup sessions, whereas you do not have to give the makeup sessions in order of sequence. For instance, if a student was um, absent uh, for the reading test and comes back uh, the next day or whenever the next session for their class is scheduled for mathematics, they would then go ahead and take the mathematics test with their classroom or in their test session. And then the reading test that they missed would be given as a makeup session. Uh, a note that directions only may be paraphrased for all students. It is not limited to students with accommodations. The student honor code is a part of our, our testing process. Uh, students are asked to uh, note the importance of doing their own work and always putting forth their best effort. In TestNav, in the testing system, the student is asked to agree with that and to check a box on, on the screen that they will see as they begin the test. They must check uh, the box there to indicate that they will uh, honor that student honor code before they can continue with testing. Some other reminders that you need to uh, share with your students um, are things such as uh, electronic devices, use of the internet, uh, any types of social media. Uh, schools need to have policies in place uh, for, for this, uh, whether or not uh, students may uh, have cell phones on their, on their person or if they need to be collected uh, in advance of testing. 
uh, all of those uh, things need to be covered with the students prior to the administration of the test. Uh, follow the guidelines in the administration code as well. Let's now look a little bit more about the operational test. Again, this information uh, by reading math, science, social studies, editing and mechanics and on demand writing, all of this will be available to you in the items and times chart, but we wanted to call your attention to each of the different content areas. Reading. Again, reading is given at grades three through eight and 10. It is one session. Uh, the approximate testing time is 115 minutes for, for the reading assessment. There is one seal code for the uh, session. There are four forms of the reading test with the exception of grade three, which has six forms. On the reading test, there will be a, an assortment of, of items. Uh, they are either multiple choice, multiple select, technology enhanced, short answer, and extended response. I will note that there is no extended response at grade three. In mathematics, again, uh, the students will test uh, that are in grades three through eight and grade 10. It is a 90 minute uh, assessment uh, tentatively. There are two seal codes for the test uh, for either part A or part B. Part A of the test is a, the non-calculator part of the test and part B, the students can use the calculator. There are six forms for mathematics and students will see multiple choice, multiple select, technology enhanced and short answer. Some additional resources are available to students uh, for mathematics. If a student needs a formula, they are embedded in the online test and students will be able to see uh, formulas and be able to select uh, whether or not they need to use that formula in the online test. Should the student be taking the paper test for those accommodated students uh, with large print or braille that receive a paper uh, student test, any formula will be printed in that test booklet for, for the student. Students will have uh, access to these uh, resources, uh, both online and in paper. And again, the, there will be no um, mathematics reference sheets this year as have been provided in the past. Uh, students will be able to see those formulas in the online test as well as being printed in the paper test. And let's look a little bit at that. Um, let's look a little bit more at that uh, formulas example so that you are comfortable with how that is uh, delivered to the student. On this screenshot here, you will see uh, two separate figures, figure one and figure two. On the, on the left, on the screenshot of figure one, would be an example of what the student will see in test nav uh, as far as the use of formulas. Uh, the information for the question uh, there is on the tab that says information. And should a formula possibly be required uh, to complete that or be helpful to the student to complete 
that uh, question or information, then they would the student would select that formula tab there and see uh, some possibilities for uh, formulas uh, to use to answer that question. And you see the formula tab is selected there in figure two. On both of the screens, figure one and figure two, on the right column, on the right hand column, you see the question there, then that the student would be able to see the, the question, then they would be able to see the formulas that they might select to use, and then they can respond to the question. This is an example of a non-secure item that is uh, contained in one of our practice tests. Again, to show you uh, where the student will find formulas for, uh, again, for the KSA mathematics content test. And again, those formulas for those who are using a paper-based test will be printed in the test booklet. Calculators are available in the online testing system. They're Desmos cal calculators. Uh, at the elementary level, you will see, the student will see a four function uh, calculator. Uh, at middle school, it's a scientific calculator, graphing at the high school level, and a scientific uh, calculator is also available to students at grade 11 in the science content test. At science, which again is given at grades 4, 7, and 11, which is a, uh, a grade level uh, or a grade span test, um, once at elementary, once at middle, and once at high school. They, uh, this test is, uh, consists of four forms. It is one session. Uh, 90 minutes uh, has been uh, uh, allowed uh, as an approximation for time for, for that test. One seal code, again, mention, mentioning of the calculators that are available uh, for the student to, uh, to answer questions. There, the student will see a variety of multiple choice, multiple select, and short answer questions on the science test. Social studies, again, is offered at grade bands, uh, offered at grades 5, 8, and 11. One session, 90 minutes, one seal code. Uh, five forms of the test will be available. Multiple choice, multiple select, technology enhanced, short answer, and extended response items will be seen on, on the social studies test. Editing and mechanics. This has been uh, reintroduced uh, to the uh, our, our spring assessment. Uh, it will be given at grades 5, 8, and 11 uh, with three forms available to uh, our students. It also is one session uh, lasting approximately 45 minutes, one seal code, and students will again see multiple choice, multiple select, and short answer in the editing and mechanics content test. The last content test is on-demand writing. It also is given at grades 5, 8, and 11. There will be four forms of the test. Students will receive uh, directions on completing one passage-based prompt and they will make the response uh, to that one prompt. There is uh, one seal code again for, for this test. Uh, approximately 90 minutes are allowed. Uh, dictionaries, the SARS are also available online to the student to use during the assessment. Uh, a notepad tool is also available for students to uh, make notes to themselves and uh, in, in developing their prompt, uh, the writing of their prompt. 
um, scratch paper can also be uh, used during the test. Uh, another uh, suggestion is for students to use um, uh, the student testing ticket if they are printed on full page. Uh, the student can use the, that student testing ticket uh, as, uh, as scratch paper as well. If the student uses scratch paper, it is recommended that they put their name on that because it becomes uh, secure materials uh, as, um, as it uh, has their signature on it and may have some important information. Schools will then be asked to securely destroy that uh, scratch paper after testing is completed. Seating charts are required for both individual and group testing for all state required assessments. Uh, you may have use either an individual seating chart or a group seating chart. Um, you would want to have a chart for each of your sessions. Uh, you'll need a seating chart for makeup testing. Uh, this shows uh, who is in the room as well as the test administrators that are in the room at the time of testing. The templates for these seating charts are available on the website and can be uh, printed out and maintained at the school level or they may be uh, maintained electronically. We encourage you to keep those seating charts uh, for at least one year before destroying securely uh, unless there is an allegation or irregularity and then you would want to keep those seating charts until such time as that uh, is resolved. Accommodations are available for our online uh, testing students uh, that uh, are participating in the KSA. I will uh, mention that there is a separate uh, recording on the accommodations and uh, uh, it will be available to you as a part of our overall trainings as well. This is just a list of those uh, common uh, uh, accommodations that are available to our students during testing based upon the student uh, who has either an IEP 504 plan or program services plan. For a couple of our uh, accommodated student types, be they uh, large, pre large print or braille, uh, they can, uh, students can receive a, uh, a form one of this test and it is a paper test uh, that is the same as what the students uh, testing online receive but a student who is braille or large print uh, would receive their paper test booklet and uh, they would make their responses in that paper test booklet and then the responses from that student would need to be transcribed into a regular uh, student response booklet. Uh, these accommodation kits are ordered through Pearson uh, through Pearson Access Next as an accommodated kit and they're or ordered through our additional orders. Uh, students who take the paper pencil test uh, can use handout cal handheld calculators uh, if uh, as long as it is uh, an approved uh, calculator from the approved calculator policy. Uh, within that accommodated kit uh, that schools may order. Uh, the, all of the materials for that particular uh, student are available in that kit. There is also a memo uh, within the kit that tells the materials and things that need to be provided to the student uh, for testing to occur. And there are also instructions for shipping back those accommodated kits to Pearson. Some other tips for online testing. Uh, the key is preparation. Prepare students. Uh, you can be preparing them now using practice tests, 
tutorials and from any of the resources and things that are available to you out on our website as well as out on the Kentucky Pearson portal. Uh, again, preparation is the key to the to relieving uh, students from test anxiety. Uh, use those practice tests and uh, have them become familiar with online testing. Uh, with also with with the test nav application itself so that they are comfortable with both ways of with both things of being able to test online as well as to use um, the test nav uh, platform. Uh, encourage you to have uh, additional staff available so that uh, you can actively monitor during these sessions. Make sure that, that sta those staff members are trained uh, in the administration code as well as the inclusion of special populations because uh, security uh, is important uh, and we want to, you know, want to make sure that that is always maintained during uh, the testing sessions. Again, encourage you to have technology staff available uh, for any troubleshooting that might occur uh, during testing or before testing with with any of the the applications. Uh, you may want to print those student test tickets that each student will use to uh, enter into the test content session. Uh, they can be printed uh, prior to testing. Uh, they do need to be kept uh, secure at all times. Again, uh, Pearson Access Next PAN test nav products are uh, updated regularly. Uh, your technology staff will know that uh, and make sure that again that you work closely with them uh, throughout the entire testing process. As mentioned uh, before, but we wanted to remind you again this year that uh, Microsoft does have a game bar uh, that is available in Windows and it needs to be disabled uh, during testing uh, because otherwise uh, when test nav sees the game bar, it will shut down uh, that particular uh, session. OAA will be uh, uh, visiting our schools, be it in person or virtual during uh, the testing times uh, and more information will come uh, about that. Uh, but we do uh, select schools randomly uh, to, to visit. And uh, again, they uh, those visits may be either uh, virtual or possibly in person. Below you see a uh, the telephone number uh, for Pearson that and the hours in which they uh, are available uh, that you can contact them with any uh, Pearson questions that you may have. This slide is uh, the locations in which the quality uh, the the question and answer sessions uh, will be uh, held and the locations in which they will occur. And you will note there that they are hybrid meetings. Uh, there will be uh, both uh, opportunities at each location for you either to choose to go in person uh, or to uh, stay online and, and participate in the Q&A sessions uh, uh, during our February meetings. This is the agenda. Uh, for those Q&A sessions uh, so that you can see what uh, the times that uh, each of the content areas will be uh, 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 discussed. All of the uh, recordings and any handouts, any resources will be available to you in this 2022 February DAC training folder and the, the information there uh, any information will be provided in that folder uh, to you as well. This is uh, the, the members of the uh, Division of Assessment and Accountability Support that you can reach out 
uh, and contact uh, by, with the number there, 502-564-4394, or you can reach us by email at dacinfo at education.ky.gov. This completes uh, the recorded session on the Kentucky um, Summative Assessment. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention today.